Hey everybody, this is JD Gaming back today with a deck profile of Cyber Dragons. Now, as I did last time, heroes are a huge fan favorite archetype, of course, but one that was very important to me personally because back in fifth grade when I played with all my school friends, Yu Gi Oh! GX was the series that became a huge fad. Of course, I had played since pretty much the beginning, but this was the first time that Yu Gi Oh! became a big thing in our school community. And and of course, where heroes are kind of Jaden Yuki, the main protagonists, you know, main cards, Cyber Dragons were up there as one of the most iconic rival options in that series. And so this has been a fun deck to revisit from time to time. We, of course, got extremely recent Cybernetic Horizon support within the last year, and we even got some things a few years back, like Breakers of Shadow, giving us things like Chimera Tech Rampage Dragon and Cyber Dragon Infinity that completely upgraded the way this deck plays and performs, and originally this deck profile was going to be last week. I admit, I got caught up with much, much more work than I ever anticipated, and it's all good now, but oh my gosh, I don't want to relive those last 10 days ever again, because it was a crazy, crazy time. But anyway, finally back, and wouldn't you know it, in my absence, we had the very unexpected and yet very very welcome return of Yu-Gi-Oh! Jesus himself. Yes, Yugi Nono is finally back, and what better time than now to showcase one of his favorite decks of all time, finally put to use, you know, the Cyber Dragon Nexter and all that, and do kind of my take on how do we build a Cyber Dragon deck from the ground up. So this is going to be a let's build. I'm going to be doing that just like always, building Cyber Dragons from the individual core cards all the way up to how I flesh out the strategy, explaining my thought process along the way. But if you just want to see the deck profile itself, feel free to click the description box down below where I have timestamps to the various sections, including the typical alphabetical profile. And then if you have any questions, feel free to check out the other sections of the video where hopefully I did a decent job explaining what it is I was trying to go for. But without further ado, let's build Cyber Dragons. The first step in building any deck is to establish a theme and build a core that supports the theme's goals. And very fittingly here, we're starting off with three copies of Cyber Dragon Core. This level 2 light machine monster has 400 attack, 1500 defense, and three very powerful abilities. The first is that upon normal summon, you're able to add any cyber spell or trap from your deck to your hand, very much like a Stratos. The second is if it's resting in your graveyard and you have the same conditions as the classic cyber dragon. Opponent has a monster or more, and you have none, you can banish this from your graveyard to summon any cyber dragon monster directly from your deck, which will also trigger its abilities if it has any. Then the third is that it becomes cyber dragon while on the field or in the graveyard, which is nowadays you just assume all the cyber dragon monsters do that, but Back in the day, there was a time when the original Cyber Dragon was such a good generic monster, it was limited. And until Proto Cyber Dragon came around, you couldn't even legitimately summon your Cyber End Dragon. So, a bit of history thrown into this card. Very powerful one here. But you really, really love that Stratos ability there. Especially when we combine it with three copies of our set's reinforcement of the army. Cyber Emergency is the normal spell that I, like many people, am so glad I picked up when they were like $6 in instead of 30 or higher. This thing lets you add any Cyber Dragon monster from your deck to your hand, or just any light monster that's a machine, as long as it cannot be normal summoned or set. So kind of a cool card here, lets you grab your Cyber Dragon core, among some other cards as well. And it has a bonus ability that says, if your opponent negates the activation of this card, you could discard a card to retrieve it back to your hand. Biggest thing with that, remember, is that Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring negates the effect of the card, but not the activation. So you can't play it against the most common counter to Cyber Emergency. However, you can use this against any Omni Negate, like a counter trap your opponent may throw at you, something along those lines. So do keep in mind, it's not the end of the world if your opponent has something like that set. You can just play right through it as long as you can afford to discard, which, let's be honest, you're setting up Cyber Dragon in your graveyard, which is a good thing, am I right? So Cyber Emergency and 3 Core allows us to get basically six copies of our main starter monster, which we're then going to normal summon and hopefully search our one copy of Cyber Repair Plant. Now, this card is easier these days than ever to use as a starter, but again, as a hard once per turn ability, you're probably just going to use it for its combo ability. It says, if a Cyber Dragon exists in your graveyard, you can activate one of these two abilities, and much like Sky Striker spells, if you happen to have three or more Cyber Dragons in your graveyard, when you activate this, you can activate both of the effects in sequence. 
The less used effect is that you can target a light machine in your grave and shuffle it back into your deck, and that kind of just sucks on its own, because if you play this and then just return the card, you lost a card in your hand for no reason, and you can't make a play with it unless you had something like a second Cyber Dragon thrown into your main deck for a machine duplication to plus four you. In general, you're going to be using the first ability, which is add a light machine monster from your deck to your hand, and this time it's okay if that monster can be special summoned, which means now we can turn our core that we use to search the repair plant into our Link 1 Salomon Great Almirage. has some interesting abilities to get itself off the field and back on the field, but the whole point of this is it's a Link 1 that requires any normal summoned monster with a thousand or less attack, and now that Cyber Dragon core exists in our graveyard as a Cyber Dragon monster, we can activate the repair plant that we now have fetched in order order to summon our copy of Galaxy Soldier by pitching any light monster from our hand, and then upon special summon once per turn we can add another Galaxy monster from our deck to our hand, so the second Galaxy Soldier comes into play, ditch another Cyber Dragon, and then you get two monsters on the field, which means we can Link Summon, or, or excuse me, Xyz Summon our Cyber Dragon Nova. This card has a few interesting abilities as well as having just the basic Cyber Dragon stats, 2100 attack and 1600 defense, needs two level 5 machine monsters to summon, and it says, once per turn, you could detach a material from this card to special summon a cyber dragon in your graveyard, which is pretty cool, depending on what it is, because again, all of these guys count as cyber dragon in the graveyard. Its other ability lets you once per turn, during either player's turn, banish a cyber dragon from your hand, or face up in one of your monster zones, in order to have this card essentially double its attack, gaining 2100 attack, up to a mighty 4200 until the end phase, and if your opponent happens to try and snipe this card with something like Solemn Strike, or a Ghost Ogre, destroying it is going to trigger its last ability, which lets you special summon any fusion monster that's a machine from your extra deck, ignoring its summoning conditions and everything, which is pretty annoying here. Uh, you're basically able to use that to bring out a nice little cyber end dragon to surprise your opponent if you'd like, but um, you know there are other reasons why we play that card as well. The main reason you're going to play the Nova is because it becomes the stepping stone into the otherwise impossible to summon cyber dragon infinity. Normally requires three light level six machine type monsters, which if you look at the list of options, there's like nothing Cyber Dragon related for sure, and the other options are no good at all. So basically once per turn, you can exceed summon this card using Nova along with all of its materials, which is very good. Starts off with the same attack and defense as Cyber Dragon, but quickly gets stronger because every one of its materials will gain it 200 extra attack. It can also gain an additional material per turn by absorbing any attack position monster on the field as one of its materials. So targeting but non-destruction removal, yes please, gets rid of threats very easily, powers itself up by 200, but those materials won't stay because once per turn you can detach one of the materials from this card in order to negate the activation of any card, which is very, very powerful, and oftentimes you're going to want to send the copy of Nova as the material to the graveyard because... That's why we play the one Nova and the two copies of Cyber Dragon Infinity. Thanks to the very new Cyber Dragon Nexter that came out in dual power, we're finally able to have another option to reuse our one copy of Nova. Nexter is a level 1 200 attack and defense light machine monster. Also becomes Cyber Dragon while on the field or grave, just like all the others, so I'll stop saying that. Um, I'll mention if it's not, but that's never going to happen, because they all do that. It says you could discard one other monster, very similar to Galaxy Soldier, in order to special summon this from your hand. Then if this thing is normal or special summon through any means, you could target a machine monster with 2100 attack or defense in your graveyard and special summon it, but you're restricted to only machine summons for the rest of the turn. You can use both of Nexter's effects in a same turn, you just can't use them more than once, but that's a very powerful way of recycling not only Cyber Dragon proper, but also just bringing back something like Nova or even Infinity back from your graveyard, and why we only need one copy of Nova before, you know, we could get uh, the two copies of Infinity in the extra. You don't really need the second Nova. You could reuse it. Heck, again, if your Infinity falls, you could bring Infinity back straight with Nexter as well. But I like the two copies. I feel three copies does have the risk of you discarding too many of your cards, especially because Galaxy Soldier, oh, you're already discarding two cards right there. Um, but Nexter is a very powerful card, obviously. One copy is technically the most efficient way to play it because it's a hard once per turn, but I do love 
the longevity provided by bringing back Nova or Infinity again and again. So choose the happy medium number. If you wanted to play three copies of this, I'll give you a suggestion on how you can fit this in this build pretty much as is, but I do like the two copies of Nexter for that purpose. Now, from here, we mentioned, okay, we're losing a lot of cards in our hand, so how do we combat this? Fortunately, another card we play three of is Cyber Dragon Hertz, a level one, 100 attack and defense light machine Cyber Dragon that has two abilities of which you can only activate one once per turn. The ability the f that's first listed is if it's special summoned, you can turn this into a level five monster and like Nexter, restrict yourself to only machines for the turn. So guess you get an extra material, but you know, back in the day, Cyber Dragons used to be a very prominent rank five deck. Um, and the toolbox is quite limited if you're only going for machines. Nowadays, you're pretty much just going infinity turbo, but you know, still something to keep in mind. It's an option, uh, but do watch out depending on how you want to build your extra deck, whether or not you can afford that ability. The main reason you play this is is because if it's sent to the graveyard, you could just add another Cyber Dragon monster from your deck or graveyard to your hand. So that's either original Cyber Dragon in deck or any monster that's calling itself Cyber Dragon while in the graveyard. So that's why we play three copies of this because even though it is a hard once per turn, it's just an amazing resource generator that's on theme with the Cyber Dragon cards. And as a level one monster, you can always just normal summon it and turn it into Link Karibo if you need, fetch another Cyber Dragon monster, and now you have one in your graveyard that you can fuse or do other plays with anyway so you don't really lose anything by playing your cyber dragon hertz originally i was playing the one again because of the hard once per turn ability but games do go a little bit longer even in cyber dragons and that's where i feel that having the three hertz really helps make sure you build up your resources you want to draw hertz with core so that hertz can be the card you discard off of your galaxy soldier and you don't lose quite as many resources um, in fact you actually set up another cyber dragon by doing so Last Cyber Dragon monster I want to talk about right now is Cyber Dragon Fia. This is easily the first cut you can make if you want to make a third Nexter fit in the strategy, but I like the variety created by this. It's a level 4 Cyber Dragon with 1100 attack and 1600 defense. Also counts itself as that, of course. And it says if you normal or special summon a Cyber Dragon except during the damage step, you could just drop this from your hand in defense position, making it very easy to make your link plays and you know build another Cyber Dragon monster into your play. It also has a continuous ability that gains you 500 attack and defense for all your Cyber Dragon monsters. Okay, bonus, but really, I just like this as an additional name. Again, feel free to cut this for the third copy of Nexter if you want some extra room in the strategy. But why are we playing so many different Cyber Dragon? Dragon monsters here. Well, of course, uh, one of the classic ways that we can abuse the low-level Cyber Dragons, everything except the Fia so far, is the three copies of Machine Duplication. This lets us hit our monsters with 500 or less attack. So either Core or Hertz or Nexter all fit into this bill in order to special summon two monsters, uh, up to two rather, from your deck with the same name as that face-up monster. And that's where Cyber Dragon proper comes into play. This card has a bonus ability, of course, that everyone knows. Special summon it if your opponent has monsters while you don't. But other than that, it's pretty much like Blue Eyes in a Blue Eyes deck. It's a card you have to play to make all your other cards better. And at least Cyber Dragon isn't a straight up vanilla, so it's a little more useful. Could be extra material if you're going second and such. But um, realistically, you're playing the Cyber Dragon at 3 because of the machine duplication. The Cyber Dragon's useful just by being a level 5 light Cyber Dragon machine monster. Uh, but the machine dupe is what really makes this theme abusable. So I really like the three copies of that in here here in order to you know get our main monster right out and then we'll talk about the last three cyber spells and traps here so we're talking first with cyber rev system this is not a hard once per turn and you could play more than one copy of it, it effectively lets you special summon cyber dragon from either hand or grave and make it invincible from card effect destruction the reason i play one is because you often don't want to burn your multiple searches on this thing um so you kind of just every once in a while grab it if it'll help you make a play. Uh, realistically, if you wanted, you could use this to bring out a Cyber Dragon, link it with something, use another copy of this, bring out another Cyber Dragon, and keep going, but I don't think that's the most effective way of using your searches. So the one copy of this, basically, when you have the luxury to search, can give you extra combo stretching power in one way or another, uh, but you don't have to do something, you know, you don't have to overload your strategy with a card that basically requires you to have the same copy of Cyber Dragon to be able to revive or special summon. Next up, we have 
Cyberload Fusion, which is a quick play fusion spell that lets you summon any Cyber Dragon fusion monster by shuffling the materials from your face-up field or banished cards. But the monster you summon is the only thing that can attack for the rest of the turn. Fortunately, it is a quick play spell, which means we can use it to summon our classic Cyber End Dragon. Needs three Cyber Dragon monsters, but very easy to do after you attack with your full field. You activate this, summon a 4,000 monster that has piercing damage and hopefully close out the game. And then, of course, the other monster you could summon is Chimera Tech Rampage Dragon. In order to get Rampage Dragon's effect off, you may have to activate Cyberload Fusion in the main phase, and I'll admit, depending on the opponent's board state, you may end up not being able to kill your opponent as easily if that were to happen. Uh, that's where Cyber Dragon Seeger and all that stuff will come in, as we'll talk about, but for right now, realize that Rampage Dragon and Cyber End Dragon are both monsters that you could summon that require two or three Cyber Dragon monsters in order to summon. And we'll talk about Rampage Dragon a little bit more in just a moment, because it is one of our key cards. But how do you set up the Cyber Load Fusion even better? It's a copy of Cybernetic Overflow. Now, this card is just so, so, so fun. Uh, it lets you banish Cyber Dragons with different levels from your hand, face up on the field, or graveyard to then destroy an equal number of cards your opponent controls without targeting, which is very very good removal and it ha says if it happens to die while it's on the field destroyed by either player's card effect you can add a cyber spell or trap from your deck to your hand you can only use each effect once per turn but you can activate both which means if your opponent tries to snipe this you activate it get the destruction off kill all your opponent's other cards and then you get to add cyber emergency to hand which lets you go core and then all the combo shenanigans that we've discussed so far this thing will banish stuff so that Cyberload Fusion can fuse them right back. And there is a very, very fun deck out there uh, made by Yassine over on uh, uh, Team Samurai's channel. If you guys haven't seen it, I think it's a fun thing worth checking out. It's a build of Cyber Dragons that focuses on three Cybernetic Overflow, along with three Trap Trick to search it out, and three copies of Heavy Storm Duster, of all things, in order to get both of Overflow's abilities, and then you basically get your core search and then go off very unconventional cyber dragon strategy and that's why in a vacuum i like this pure variant a little bit more uh i'm a little more comfortable with it and honestly that may not be the best thing to do if you want to be you know the top echelons of competition um uh, you see and obviously made a very great meta call playing that specific build in the meta game that he did but very very entertaining guy awesome profile i thought it was an, an amazing thing so feel free to check out that channel and just look at that video it's just awesome but you know again i wanted to do a let's build of what we're probably more comfortable and familiar with here so one copy of overflow because it is a searchable option here and then to kind of round out the cyber dragon core section here i play one copy of foolish burial this is basically going to get us our hearts or core to the graveyard and i thought very much about well what if i cut this and play the third nexter well i like how this is able to hit something like uh, or your hertz so that you get a cyber dragon in graveyard while getting cyber dragon to your hand uh, or you could do the same thing where you add core to your graveyard so it adds the number of cyber dragons you have access to um, whether you want them banished with something like cores effect so that you can have overflow or rather um, have cyber load fusion take advantage of those resources or you just need another cyber dragon name in your graveyard um, you can activate this in order to send your hertz to the grave add cyber dragon to your hand special that and the main reason this card comes up is because we're playing like the crazy uh, folks that we are three copies of overload fusion i experimented with preta plants and a lot of other fun ways to try and get this card out but it just doesn't quite work the way i want it so i went with a full three copies of overload fusion this effectively is a miracle fusion allowing you to summon a dark machine fusion from your extra deck by banishing the materials from your field or graveyard and it's basically if you draw this amazing make all your link plays make all your basic plays and then summon out a copy of kind Meritic Rampage Dragon just for free. This thing has the same exact stats as Cyber Dragon, but it's a dart. It needs any two or more Cyber Dragon monsters to summon, and when you fusion summon this card, you're able to blow up spell and traps uh, just uh, up to the number of materials that you use. So probably unless you need to specifically blow up all of your opponent's back row, just summon this with two. It's the most efficient way to do so. And then during your main phase, you can send up to two Light Machine monsters from your deck to the graveyard, triggering things like Hertz and setting up stuff like Core. 
in order to gain an additional attack for each battle phase this turn. While this starts off with 2100 attack times 3, which will give you access to 6300 attack points total to, you know, do most of the game winning damage to your opponent, we can also combine two of our machine monsters, including a Cyber Dragon, into our Cyber Dragon Seeger, which effectively takes the role of Power Bond. You don't need Power Bond anymore because Overload Fusion plus Seeger is the same overall effect as Power Bond, and uh, it's a little more consistent because Seeger exists in the extra deck and can be used anytime we can summon Rampage Dragon, even with something like our Cyber Load Fusion. But effectively, if we have not attacked yet in the battle phase, Cyber Dragon Seeger lets us activate its quick effect to boost one of our other monsters with 2100 or more attack by... 2100 attack so rampage dragon effectively gets doubled to 4200 we can't do damage with seeger for the rest of the turn but you could still kill a link monster as long as you didn't activate cyber load fusion to summon the rampage dragon and then that gives us now 4200 times three or 12,000 what is that 12,600 uh, something along those lines i didn't do the math and double check it so don't don't flame me if i'm screwed that up but more than enough to win the game through a bunch of link monsters or otherwise so very powerful combo Obviously, you need to have access to Seeger in the deck. Probably not more than one in most situations, but this is effectively taking the role of Power Bond in the classic Cyber Dragon deck. And while the core today was very, very lengthy and in-depth, the rest of the cards are actually pretty streamlined just to help us get the most out of our primary cards. First off, you have to realize that you have to make a decision, are you going first or second? It's Cyber Dragons, you're probably going to aim to go second. In the event that you go first, hey, you have access to your Infinity Turbo combos, so you won't do too badly, but you do get the most value by going second because one, you're able to potentially kill your opponent by accessing something like Rampage Dragon on your very first turn with an additional draw to boot, and you can take advantage of annoying cards from your main deck like three copies of Evenly Matched. This thing is a classic for Cyber Dragons ever since its release. It lets you go and force your opponent to banish everything they control except one card, all face down, non-targeting, non-destruction, removal, and uh, all you have to do is give up a battle phase in order to make that happen. The idea with Cyber Dragons here is if you do this and draw this blowout card, you clear out your opponent's board barring a negation ability, and you're able to force your opponent to fight 1v1 against your Cyber Dragon Infinity, which is probably going to steal their last monster, and then now they have to fight back with potentially nothing against your Omni Negate Terror. So that's why this card is so powerful. It's because you're able to establish Cyber Dragon Infinity and just make a really unfair scenario when you're fighting one-on-one -on -one against your opponent, and they're down on all their resources. So that's why we're doing that there. To further limit them, I like playing three copies of Infinite Imperial permanence. This thing, of course, is essentially effect failure with a little bit of a bonus. It lets you activate itself upon having no field, uh, even during your main phase, which means you can blank things before you go off with your initial play. You can activate it from your hand, just like Valor, if you control no field, so you can target one of your opponent's cards during their turn if they happen to be going first. And if you set it, you also get to blank spell and trap cards that are activated in the same turn within the card's column. So very, very powerful set of bonuses. I just honestly love this card these days, and as much as I was a fan of Effect Failure since its very release, I just can't justify playing Effect Failure in most strategies now, and Permanence is the way to go, I feel, in most cases, especially because it is not vulnerable to cards like Called by the Grave. This is extremely powerful when you're able to get rid of your opponent's options as well. In situations where you're able to go second, obviously you're going to want to stop your opponent's hand traps, but if you're going first, just back up your Cyber Dragon Infinity with this thing, and your opponent's going to have even harder of a time trying to fight through all your stuff, because now you can get rid of their combo piece from the graveyard and shut down their abilities for a turn cycle as well so very powerful card um, you like it whether you're going first or second and that's why i like the three copies and for the last three cards of the main just three copies of ash blossom and joyous spring and now again there are other ways you can build the main but i wanted to go kind of this general route here these cards in testing honestly worked very well softening up your opponent's field allows you to otk even more efficiently and basically lets the deck do what it wants to um, if you want to tweak i'd suggest the last 
12 cards are where I would start um, and then kind of go back to the core see if you want to make cuts like Fia if you really want but you know just my current take on this this is the way I like building the deck to build the extra deck I want to talk about two potential options you could play realistically you don't need to play either one of these but I do like talking about them at least because they are solid options and currently I have one of each of them in here Platinum Gadget and Cleefort Genius both have the same arrows and same summoning conditions of two machine type monsters one's got 1600 attack the other's 1800 and Platinum Gadget's only used as a special summon a level 4 or lower machine monster from your hand once per turn to a zone this card points to it does have another restriction that says you can't link up which is the biggest deterrent with this card but hey if you have access to something like Cyber Dragon Hertz and you want to just bring it to the field or a next turn you don't want to discard this card will help you extend your plays further and you could still use the fact that it has two arrows in order to summon your rampage dragon with something else if you'd like um, like an infinity or whatever so does come up from time to time a uh, bit more useful in general is the Cleefort genius specifically for this build because it says this link summon card is unaffected by spells traps effects or the uh, activated effects of other link monsters which is pretty decent and it says once per turn you could target a face-up card on either side of the field just blank both of them which is nice because that helps you go for otks through your opponent's annoying cards as well but then the last effect even comes up as well if you happen to summon monsters at the same time to both of these zones normally probably you know the Cleefort pendulum summon but in this deck could be something like your machine duplication uh, you're able to go ahead and add a level five or higher machine monster from your deck to hand which could be galaxy soldier or cyber dragon so it does happen from time to time that you're able to do this and so kind of like having access to Cleefort Genius as our primary link to monster from there the last link monster we play is a copy of Boral Sword this deck is otk.deck and Boral Sword lets you do that as well. Only problem is this is a non-machine monster, so you can't summon it in the turn you've activated the restrictive abilities of Nexter or Hertz, so do keep that in mind. But other than that, still a very powerful option and very easy to have an extra monster on your field in order to go and switch to defense position and then you just link that card right off or fuses it away or whatever. One more Xyz monster I like playing in addition to the Cyber Dragons is a copy of Artifact Durandal. This card's got 2400 attack, 2100 defense, it's a fairy that needs any two uh, level five monsters. Again, can't be summoned if you're restricting yourself to machines, but I chose this over Pleiades because whereas Pleiades is decent, you summon infinity instead of it most of the time and that does wonders for you. This card gives you something that an infinity can't. It has two very powerful abilities. One is a quick effect that lets you force both players to shuffle their hands back into their deck and redraw the same number of cards, effectively nullifying your opponent's search abilities and unbricking your hand. And the second ability is when your opponent activates a normal spell or trap and or activates a monster effect, you're able to go and force your opponent's effect to change, disappear essentially, and become kill one of your own spell or trap cards, which means if you have Cyber Overload set, you can uh, make that card, or excuse me, Cyber Overflow set, you can have that trap card get killed, activate it, uh, pop all your opponent's cards, and then have your search for your Cyber Emergency and go off. So the inherent synergy with this deck, I feel, is what makes it worth playing. Um, and again, I like the extra reach that this card creates over cards like uh, Constellar Pleiades, which is basically going to be overshadowed by your Infinity. The last three cards I've dedicated slots to in the extra deck, you could always bump these cards up further by cutting either Platinum Gadget and or Cleefort Genius, but I like playing the one Chimera Tech Fortress Dragon, which lets you turn any of your monsters plus uh, your opponent's machine monsters into a big monster that eats up your opponent's Sky Striker links, their Gizmek Orochi, I believe, is machine, um, Dingirisu is a machine as well, the Orcus, so lots of machines in the current metagame, so I still like playing a copy of this, and then Chimera Tech Mega Fleet Dragon is basically going to let you eat up any of your opponent's extra monster zone cards along with your cyber dragon monster in order to just get it off the field and if your opponent happens to summon another monster into their extra monster zone you could summon another one as long as you're not using this card as the material so you know you use it uh, for some other play or maybe it just gets killed because it only has 2400 attack points i don't know but that's why i like playing the two and one uh you basically have extra removal just by normal summoning your cyber dragon as an additional removal option that the deck has in the main if you will without having to side if you watch the video in its entirety thanks hopefully you guys enjoyed seeing the creation of this deck as much as i did putting it together and playing it for you guys we'll start off here with the main deck flat 40 as always we got triple ash blossom and joyous spring triple cyber dragon proper then we have triple core triple hertz 
double Nexter, and one Fia. Then we have double Galaxy Soldier to round out the monsters. Then for spells, we have triple Called by the Grave, triple Cyber Emergency, one Cyber Repair Plant, Rev System, Cyber Load Fusion, and one Foolish Burial. Then we have triple Machine Duplication, uh, triple Overload Fusion, just because we go in all in on that OTK. And then for traps, we have one Cybernetic Overflow, triple Evenly Matched, and triple infinite impermanence for again a 40 card main deck for our extra deck starting with our link ones we have link karibo and salomon great al mirage for link twos i have a couple of optional ones in platinum gadget and cleefort genius but do make sure you play the cyber dragon sea you get it because this card is like the main thing that you do want to see uh we have our boral sword dragon at link four and then for xyz monsters rank five we have the artifact durandal and one cyber dragon nova to go with our two cyber dragon infinity watch the video if you're not sure why on that ratio and then for fusions we have one chimera tech fortress dragon double chimera tech mega fleet dragon and one rampage dragon and then more classic cyber end dragon to round out the 15 in the extra deck that's it for now but feel free to grab one of these videos on your way out if you really enjoyed what you saw today remember to subscribe to jd gaming for more Yu-Gi-Oh videos thanks guys this is jd gaming hope you guys enjoyed as always and i'll see you guys next time